Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Breaking Down Marketing Automation for Brokers. I'm Robin Kroll, and I lead the go-to-market strategy for insurance brokers, as well as the customer insights practice here at Goose Digital. Joining me on the webinar today is Nancy Costa. Nancy is the VP of Marketing and Operations at the Hull Group. Nancy leads the digital transformation at her organization and is helping modernize much of their marketing and operations, which is enabling the Hull Group to remain successful in an increasingly competitive market. Um, I'll let uh, Nancy introduce herself and the Hull Group in, in just a moment. Um, so the agenda for today is, uh, after the, the introductions, I'm going to walk you through a bit through how Goose perceives the changed insurance landscape that I'm sure you are all living and why we see that marketing automation is a critical tool to help brokers succeed in this new environment. Um, I'll then invite Nancy to share with us how marketing has changed at the Hall Group in the last year or so and how they're using marketing automation to make all of this happen. We hope you'll have lots of questions and please submit them via the chat and we'll try and answer them at the end. So Nancy, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, Hall Group? Thanks, Robin. Um, well, the Hall Group is a family-owned business that was established by uh, Thomas better known as Toby Hall, uh, back in 1954. And really it was because he thought there was a need for um, high-end service and a one-stop shop for everyone's insurance needs. So we are a full-service brokerage, and that includes personal, commercial, life, and group benefits. Um, we are privately owned. We have no affiliations with any other insurers or brokerages. And really, um, we are focused on high-end service, personalized service, a lot of expert advice. We have some very seasoned employees. And just trying to demystify the insurance process so that we can simplify it and basically design customized insurance plans for the needs of our clients. Great. Thanks, Nancy. And, and I'm looking forward to you sharing how some of that, you know, customized, personalized experience is able to come through in your uh, new marketing automation strategy and initiatives. So a bit about Goose Digital, we're, we are a full service digital marketing agency and we're based in Toronto. We have significant experience in the insurance industry. We help clients align their digital marketing strategy with their corporate goals and then help accelerate its execution. Our expertise is rooted in using modern technologies and shaping the tactics and use cases with a set of strategies. Our, our real goal is to help organizations transform how they engage with their customers and that, those customers' experiences, as well as their internal operations. We also work with clients across um, other verticals, including retail, manufacturing, and technology. And what that allows us to do is bring marketing and digital best practices from these industries to insurance. And I think it's really important because it's no longer good enough for companies to be able to benchmark themselves with other organizations just within their own vertical. They need to look at other industries as well because your customers are certainly measuring how they experience um, you know, their engagement with insurance with other other companies as well. So let's take a step back and think about how digital is impacting every one of our lives. Um, if we look at it from an entertainment perspective, instead of cable TV, we very often stream TV shows and sports and movies via apps or web portals. From a communication perspective, well, we've almost completely replaced phone calls with social media platforms and texting, usually with our smartphones. We've created a web of pur purpose-based portals, which really means that, you know, in our personal life, we'll tend to use Instagram and Facebook. And, you know, from a business perspective, LinkedIn has become critical for, for networking and, and learning about other industries or what's going on in your own industry. And we have very often turn to Twitter and other channels for news. 
From a business perspective, well, there's you know chat and WebEx, a couple of things that we're already using today in today's presentation. And of course, email has become a staple in every one of our lives. And I'm not sure how we could go through a business day without it. More recently, we've also started to digitize things like uh, signatures with DocuSign and calendar bookings through applications like Calendly. So what does that mean for insurance providers? Well, put yourself in your customer's shoes. So just like us, they have turned to a digital first mindset. And in fact, about 68% of insurance consumers search for insurance information online. So that might be to shop for insurance, to look for answers uh, surrounding claim questions, to make changes to their policies, or simply to understand what they have purchased and how they're protected. It's critical for all businesses today to understand the digital shift that has and continues to occur. Insurance brokers need to modernize the way they engage, talk, and do business with their audiences. They need to digitize operations such as marketing, sales, and service to be where customers are, and even more importantly, to provide the experience that customers expect. What worked in the past, for the most part, doesn't work today, and it most certainly will not work tomorrow. But the good news is that marketing has also evolved. So thanks to this digital revolution, marketing's ability to impact and influence audiences has never been greater. Marketing now has the tools to reach and address leads and customers across the entire buying journey. In other words, from initial awareness of your company, product and services, to active sales opportunities, through to in-life customer communications. Marketing is able to engage your audience with relevant and targeted messages. So in reality, we're at the intersection of technology and consumer behaviors, and marketing has never been so well positioned to take advantage. From lead generation through to viable sales opportunities through to customer service, marketing automation can make meaningful engagement and touches with your audience to support sales and customer experiences. So when you look at the entire journey from awareness through to contact and engagement, customer service and renewal, there are potentially dozens of touch points where you can add value and personalization. So a broker who's equipped with a flexible communication platform that supports engagement through defined sales operations and customer service journeys is going to enjoy a, a distinct advantage over their competition. What's clear is that customers are now accustomed to a level of personalization and responsiveness that traditional tactics just cannot provide and they can't provide at scale. So how do we help insurance brokers address these challenges? Well, at Goose, we have a three-pronged approach. We begin with the comprehensive strategic evaluation process. We assess current technology and sales and marketing operations, growth targets and market focus, and we deliver a strategic roadmap with recommendations and budget. Our service model also includes turnkey digital marketing services. Skills and experience that are critical to digital marketing success are not always present at the brokerage level, and we understand that. But because our senior team has a real depth of industry experience, we're able to dive into the targeted market with thoughtful campaigns that are executed with a focus on key performance indicators. And supporting all of this are best of breed marketing automation platforms. At Goose, our depth and expertise in marketing industry leading platforms means that organizations can execute, measure, and modify their marketing programs at a highly efficient level and do so really quickly. Our consultative approach helps drive the best possible results aligned with the most meaningful metrics. We work with several of, best, of the best of breed marketing platforms that are out there, including Acton, which is the platform that Hull Group is using for their marketing automation. 
One of the things that we also recognized early on is that we had to readjust how we talked about marketing automation and shift the conversation from what these technology platforms can do to the benefits they can deliver specifically for insurance brokers. So a couple of months ago, we created a blog series specifically directed at brokers and broke down marketing automation platform benefits into four key areas. The first one is about how marketing automation can help drive awareness specifically for new customers, how the platforms can help optimize the consideration phase for leads, how the platforms how can empower the action of your sales and service teams, and finally, the role they can play in building customer advocacy. I'm now going to invite Nancy to join the conversation as well. It's it's great for me to be able to speak about best practices and what Goose does to help brokers. It's the real examples that truly resonate. So Nancy, maybe you can start off by telling us what drove the Hull Group to say, finally, we need to change how we're approaching, uh, engaging with leads, customers, and introduce a more digital mindset to our business. Well, I think it's key for any brokerage in this day and age, you know, as we are a service industry and when you compare yourself, which is what your customer is doing to everything else that's out there, uh, how they interact with you is key. But in, certainly for the Hull Group, which is a smaller size, we're not a, a large alpha house machine, um, having certain limited resources, um, we really knew that to stay relevant and be a player in the game, that we had to uh, look at ways where we were going to gain some efficiencies and definitely be able to interact with our customers the way they wanted. And, and that's really key, right? How are we going to grow? How are we going to change? And how are we going to be a value add to our customers in the, in the best way possible? Um, that was definitely key. And, and just knowing that things needed to be automated to, to gain those efficiencies. So reporting has always been a challenge, you know, with broker management systems, that's tough. Um, so being able to use a platform like Acton would certainly help us down the road. You know, we try a few things and that wasn't working. So this was definitely something we worked uh, hard on and uh, worked with yourselves, Goose Digital and our leadership team to find out what the plan was going to be and really have a very focused approach. That's great. Um, and, you know, I think the starting off with the strategy obviously is really key to any uh, successful digital transformation. But one of the things that um, you also started with was a focus on awareness and, and that resulted in, uh, you know, a, a redoing your website. That was very important. I think, uh, again, being a smaller brokerage, uh, we're very well known by our clients, which are uh, definitely multi-generational. You know, some are, are the grandchildren of our existing clientele that joined us in 1954. But really being able to communicate our brand uh, internally and externally and building that awareness as to what we do and how we service our people was essential. And really, that's the first tool someone will search is, is look to the website to find out a little bit more about the organization. So uh, wanting to also also have a very fresh look and uh, use that to attract new talent was very important for us. So we did start there. That's great. And you know what? First impressions do count, They're don't they? Very important, right? You do unfortunately judge a book by its cover <laughs> at times. Um, now, if we talk a little bit about uh, lead gen, what was was the Hull Group doing anything for lead gen prior to embarking in this digital transformation? We had tried some traditional. Um, um, ways of doing this you know we bought some lists we had some people doing a lot of other things that were a little less focused and really weren't getting any return on our investment so doing this was key for us and really it started by identifying who our key target audience were you know and, and will be and that is designing an entire persona around that so what do we want to achieve who is the type of customer that we're currently gaining the most success with and what are we open to and being able to to really um focus on that. And we started with the urban entrepreneur for our commercial side. Uh, we do have quite a few already in our books, and that's how we've actually grown the portfolio. Many people who are startups, small to mid-sized business, um, and that was really our focus and understanding how they buy, right? And who are the people who are searching for insurance? So what kind of language do they use? It was really important to be able to, to sort of test that out. So we went through a variety of ads. We tried um, test and learn scenarios so that we could actually adapt and change as necessary so that we could get the results we wanted. And then we just designed customized landing pages for each of them, um, you know, where we ask a few 
a few key pieces of data that we need to sort of get the ball rolling and that would allow us to have a more relevant conversation from a sales perspective. One challenge that we often hear, um, you know, in, in speaking with insurance brokers is, you know, there's a lot of investment in initially attracting that lead, but what happens after that first click? What if, you know, what if that lead does not go ahead and, and convert and, and request a quote? Um, you've already paid for the lead, so how do you try and engage with them? So maybe you can talk a little bit about um, what you've done to try and, you know, nurture that lead. So I think the, the first thing is really being able to act very quickly, right? So that's where the automation piece comes in. Um, having, you know, we're only 23 people strong at our organization and only a few are focused on sales. So being able to respond to the client in the format that they want. So whether it's, you know, quick callback, quick email, those things can be automated and customized. Um, that's the first thing. And then having that initial set of data that is pre-populated helps us sort of Year, who's going to have the initial conversation and then constantly um, remarketing and, and putting ourselves back out there so that if it doesn't be if it's not successful the first time around it's coming up in their searches it's it's you know following up and reinforcing that initial message that was key when we were starting to put this across all of our, our channels you know, going back to what you initially said about, you know, that that high touch and that personalized service that your customers are used to having when they have that face to face or phone call. Um, you know, I, I'm, I know brokers often are concerned that they're going to lose some of that when they embark on a digital transformation. Sure. <laughs> um, and so maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the things that you've implemented that have allowed you to stay along that that uh, that more white glove type service. Yeah, I actually think it's quite the opposite. So we were starting to find and, and are still working at uh, fixing the fact that we too often get bogged down with all of the um, processing, sort of all the back end work that needs to be done to complete a, 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 an insurance transaction. And actually what the automation platform does and having this sort of approach is it frees up the time, right? It, you gain that efficiency to actually be able to do what is important to not only retain and, and grow your business, which is build the relationship with your client, right? Have the time so that you can have that conversation and again, you know, work on explaining what insurance is. So really we looked at um, having very consistent images with whatever we were trying to do in terms of our messaging, personalizing those automations, um, so that, you know, you're using the customer name or the prospect name and then really reinforcing what our, our, our value is and our brand is and, and trying to do that in a way that entices them to, to call back throughout that whole quote process so that it is reinforcing and personalized to the individual themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the, um, you know, part of what you're doing, Nancy, is, I um, mean, you know, obviously the, you know, the improving the marketing, but there's also the other side, which is looking for operational efficiencies where you can actually help and empower your sales team. Yeah, that's actually huge for us. And, um, you know, we're on a, a common system to, to, to most. We work with a, a very popular and probably well-used uh, BMS in the industry here in Canada. And um, there are some limitations. So certainly, gaining efficiencies on the operation end is key and this really helps because you can instead of having your your service staff or your sales staff having to take that extra time to write up emails or um, you know certain certain uh, programs we might be doing if we want to try and send out some information that all gets done it's templated out you can tweak it and customize it as necessary but just alleviating that from the front line was was very critical um, you know, knowing what uh, needs to happen in terms of follow-up questions for certain policies, um, still, you know, having the signature line embedded with the CSR who's on the account or the person who's following up on the lead. All of this has really, really helped to sort of move things along. And we continue to tweak that and implement that into our process now so that we can be a lot quicker to respond and have those more meaningful conversations. So streamlining the process, uh, looking at things that don't add value in the end that really, you know, are paper pushing items, so to speak, mm -hmm. or processing items that need to be taken away from the service point and, you know, 
allowing this piece to actually work. So all of the back end stuff gets automated and all of your frontline service is really where your value add is to the customer. That's great. And, and it also goes back to one of your points about sort of that, that test and learn is that you're not oh, going to be able to develop everything right away. No, but it's it a matter takes time. Of, it <laughs> takes time. And, and you know, one of the, the powerful things, obviously, about these platforms is that as we learn and uncover new ways to actually make things more efficient, it's easy to go ahead and implement new programs, automate certain things, and roll them out and test them and see the results. Absolutely. So, you know, results. So that, that's a good segue to, um, everyone to the next one everybody wants. And, and I do remember one of the first conversations uh, that we had with the Hall Group. And in a lot of the conversations centered around this concept of transparency. That, um, you know, a digital transformation, there is an investment. We want to be able to see the results of our investment. And we want it to be uh, reporting that is easy to understand and things that can potentially be shared within the brokerage um, in order to make sure that everybody understands their role in actually driving the digital transformation and growing the business. Yeah, I think, you know, the dollar signs are important no matter what size your organization is, but certainly being able to um, really understand what's working and what's not is key and seeing some very quick wins and being able to, I think, shift gears is really what's critical. So for sure, for our, for me, it was important to look at the leadership team and look at the impact of our investment, right? So you look week after week, month after month, see where you need to tweak to gain improvements. But certainly once you're getting to the year mark, you then have some solid comparisons year over year. And we're already seeing some of that gain coming back quite quickly and we're in month six. You guys are doing very well. We're doing very well. We're very excited. <laughs> very excited. So a lot of what we talked about so far has to do with, you know, the awareness, consideration, and then the action that has a lot to do with the, the leads. But equally important are your existing customers. Sure. Um, and, and these platforms do provide you with a way to to engage with them as well. So maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the things you're doing to market to your existing customer base. Yeah, it's been fantastic because you can really use it to drive messaging to your existing customers as well, as you mentioned. We work on a newsletter which you know uh, has content that's being pushed out where we can also take some of that putting into blogs. We try and get relative content and being able to quickly, you know, if someone wants to unsubscribe or wants to have some specific information sent to them, all of that in the back end of the, the uh, Acton platform really helps. It's a real smooth, seamless transition. And uh, just, you know, constant corporate branding, constant relevant content and messaging, and that, that continual touch point with your, your customer along the, um, the, the phase of your longevity with that customer, really. But during the renewal process, what's coming up, and even outside the renewal process, you know, what could be important to them? What's relevant in our industry? How can things impact their buying and um, their policies themselves? So it really allows us far more opportunity to interact with them throughout the year versus just 30 to 120 days out of renewal, depending on what line of business. I think one of the things we've learned is that um, this is an expectation that uh, consumers have across any business that they engage with, and that's certainly true with their insurance provider. Mm -hmm. So the Hull Group has done quite a bit over the last year. Uh, what's up next? A lot <laughs> for Q3 and Q4. Um, we've got some new things in progress. We uh, just uh, signed on to call tracking just to sort of get a better a sense of uh, who's calling and what they need. We're working on our whole social strategy so that we can align all of our social platforms to our website and our brand imaging. We're looking at some new lead gen campaigns. We started with commercial, as I mentioned, we've got the personal line sort of coming up and then life. Um, and uh, we started looking at ways to roll out the renewal email. So here's your renewal coming up. Let's call, call in, let's talk about it, see what's changed and what's not. That's on the personal side. And then going into Q4, we do want to roll that out for commercial as well and maybe look at some referral campaigns, how to get that business. Cyber is a hot topic everywhere, Absolutely. so we want to end the year on a bang with that. And then just some enhanced campaign reporting. That's really it's. It's a lot. It's a, it's it's a, a lot. lot. It's moving fast. And I'm sure we'll have a few other things that we'll want to add to uh, your timeline as well. It's always good. All right. So I think that brings us to the end of the webinar.
I'm going to see if we have time for uh, a few questions. I think we have time for one question. Um, okay, Nancy, let's see. This Maybe you'll kick off with this one. What type of internal resourcing do I need in order to be successful with this kind of a digital marketing program? Well, I think the first and most important thing is really getting the leadership on board. Like anything else, you need the buy-in from everyone at the organization and messaging really starts top down. So that's number one. And then in terms of uh, being able to really drive it in, in the right fashion and timely, you need someone to be a point person. So depending on the size of your organization or what your resources is, you really do need um, uh, someone who can either coordinate uh, and have that as a sort of full-time role to liaise with their leadership to get sign off on some of the more strategic and important um, points to move it forward. Or, you know, in my example, uh, I sit on the leadership team. I'm really driving the, um, the, the, the strategy across. Uh, I do still interact with the rest of the executive team. Obviously, that's key. Um, but then I also have a lot of other roles. I'm wearing <laughs> quite a few hats. So I will say that that does slow things down. So, you know, ideally, you'd like to have someone focused on this full time, but that's not always realistic for the size of the organization. So, but definitely you need someone to be working with Goose, right? And you need someone who's got a daily touch point on this and you need buy-in from the top down. Yeah, I, I would agree. And thinking of, you know, some of the, the other insurance brokers that we work with, um, obviously the leadership, because any initiative is going to fail without leadership, uh, having buy-in from them being from the beginning and supporting all the way through. But we do have other uh, clients where we don't have someone who's at your level, of, you know, at a, at a VP uh, level, but at more a coordinator level, and then oh, they're sure. able to do that liaison with the leadership team, and we've seen that to be very effective as for well. sure. Well, we have time for a few more questions. Okay, great. Um, okay, so this question is about automating uh, commercial communication. So, you know, very often we talk about personalization and uh, marketing automation. We tend to think of more of the, the personal lines. So if we think of the, the commercial lines, um, you know, how does that work? You know, are, you know, are they sort of canned communications or can they be personalized? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, I, you, you can always start with a template, which is what we've done. Um, but then certainly you do need to be able to have the flexibility to customize them, right? So whether that's specific to an audience, a message, or whatever value you're trying to bring to the table, um, that's really important. And, and really what that means is, you know, looking at the creative, the images, the keywords you're using, and how you're, you're trying to relay your message and convey that. I would think that certainly you can, you know, if you need some help and you need to template it out, great. If not, you should be customizing it as necessary. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think of sort of the, the partnership between uh, Goose and, and the whole group or insurance broker that what you bring to the table is you, you bring your brand and your brand value and understanding of your audience and the messaging. Um, what marketing automation and Goose brings to the table are these templated use cases. So the they are set out with the flow, but then we can introduce a message that really conveys what your brand is all about and a way to communicate with your specific audience. Yeah, so it really takes that, you know, that, 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 uh, that sort of more detailed work out of your hands. Yeah, and I think it's important to say that brokerages shouldn't shy away or be afraid to uh, embark on this if they have no marketing expert on staff or they don't necessarily um, have the, the wherewithal of, of some of the new tools out there, because certainly that's what a partner like Goose is there for. It's really to use the expertise they have in other verticals and their experience in this, in this uh, field to sort of help I would say demystify and simplify <laughs> marketing automation for brokers, right? Because it's not Absolutely. it's not really regular for the industry. So, so one last question: um, We seem to be redoing our website every few years. Is that common? <laughs> and um, now that when we look at digital marketing, we also look at not just our website but other channels. So, Nancy. The whole group started off by redoing your, your website. So. Yeah, and I mean, so I'm one year into the whole group, and that was one of my tasks. But certainly, uh, my understanding is they had redone their website a few years prior as well. So I would say this is probably a very common theme, and uh, certainly uh, it needs to reflect um, your current reality, right? So, 
yes, that's important. And when someone is visiting your company website for the first time, whether it's a prospective customer, whether it's an existing customer who's never looked at it, um, it really is very important for visitors to be able to quickly and easily learn about, you know, who you are, who's your leadership team. That's key. You know, meet us, tell us about it. What's your value? What's your, your message and your vision? Um, because unfortunately people do, you know, judge a book by its cover. And then really, um, the power of being able to change your landing pages and uh, having a website that functions in the back end, right? So something can look very pretty on the front end and not be functional to help with the automation and, and other things. So you want to be able to track who's landing, uh, what type of user it is, and being able to get things back very quickly. But that in tandem with a platform like Acton allows you to really be able to do one or the other. So certainly you don't have to be updating your website all the time. You need one that functions and is in a modern state to be able to be robust enough. But definitely that in tandem with a platform, a map platform is, is key, really. And, you know, you just it's important to keep keep costs down and do it. But, uh, you know, every every few years you need to kind of refresh it, I think. That's great. So, Nancy, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. And um, I know we've had several questions that we weren't able to answer, so we'll reach out to people. And uh, we want to thank everybody here for joining us this afternoon. And we'll be sending out uh, an email with a copy of the webinar, so you'll be free to go back and um, take a look at any of the interesting things or um, insightful things that Nancy and I had to say this afternoon. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you.